I mean, real estate, like if you really want to sell, if you want to be successful in selling, it's not just like you're sitting there, you do a few cute TikTok videos and your phone is ringing. That's not the business anymore. Hey everyone, this video with Sam Golovi is gonna be over an hour, we'll give you some little bit of expectations. We talked about brand new built all over Sacramento, the price ranges. So if you are in the market and you're looking to understand what's out there when it comes to brand new homes, definitely watch this video from the beginning to the end. There's a lot of value in it. Make sure you drop a comment below and then don't forget to like this content and most importantly, subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's an easy way of saying thank you for all the information that we provide for you guys. Thank you so much and I hope you enjoyed this video. Hey everyone, welcome back to PSG Show. Today is an amazing day. I brought nothing but the best, Sam the man. We're gonna talk about everything when it comes to new build, new construction. He knows everything and he's one of the best in the whole Sacramento County when it comes structuring a deal. Sam, welcome to the show. What's up? Thanks for having me. Absolutely, man. I've been dying to get you on this show. It's been so long. <laughs> yeah, I've been really looking forward to it. I think today's going to be really good. Today, we want to kind of go over uh, the new builds. Obviously, we understand the market has been shifting. Right. And you've probably seen, you know, price dramatically shift. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about understanding what the new construction is when it comes to not a regular person who builds the house, mm -hmm. but an actual subdivision. Right. And tell us everybody what that is and what currently there is as far as uh, what kind of builders out there that you have relationship with. Yeah, so in our area, we actually have a, a lot of new builders. I mean, there's really, a, I would say like a top few that really build, I would say most of the Sacramento region. We're even talking about like Placer County, El Dorado County, but big names like you would hear are probably like Lennar, Taylor Morrison, DR Horton, Kehov Nanian, uh, just to name a few. So there's really like a top four or five that <laughs> builds those there. names. <laughs> yeah. Those, yeah. Those are just like big, big names that have multiple developments, multiple subdivisions, multiple master plans going on at any given time. Random parts of Sacramento. Well, obviously they're very strategic where they build, but all over the map. So um, it's more of location when you go to buy these. But yeah, they are, they're building a ton of different communities right now, especially the market's been so hot the last few years, especially the last two, three has just been booming. So they've really been bold, uh, building and ramping up the last few years. But now I think that they're really taking a hit now the market's cooling off. Yeah, I can only assume because we've been seeing a hit on traditional real estate when it comes from like a fixing and flipping yeah, a game. But definitely. I can only assume that the interest rate's going up. And as far as I know, when you start getting a house into contract, let's say I love this model, yeah, you're not going to get it locked up on interest rate right away. There's like, right. sometimes it takes six to 12 months for the property mm -hmm. to be built, right? Yeah. So what happens to the point, let's say you fell in love in the house in Folsom mm -hmm. and then you were quoted at 2.99% in February, right? and the house is getting finished now, and we're yeah. sitting at 8.3% as of today. What do you do? Yeah, so, I mean, it really depends on if they timed it right. You know, if, if they got in, locked in a contract, and depending on the lender they're working with, if they locked the rate right away, they probably kind of won, but a lot of people didn't. Or a lot of people were thinking, especially throughout this year, right? You, you may have heard some lenders say like, hey, float your rate, you know, what and that, that mean? float your rate is basically like, um, just waiting till the rate drops down enough again. So then they can lock it at they that moment. Catch the bottom. They want to catch the bottom. Right. But then as you know, you've yeah. probably talked about on the show, like there is no such thing as timing the market perfectly. There's no such And the thing. same thing goes with interest rates. You know, there's, there's always news out there that, Hey, rates are going up, which <laughs> we're pretty confident in now. <laughs> yeah. We're confident in that news. But when rates are, hey, rates are probably going to tick down a little bit, maybe wait before locking your rate. Those people really took the hit. Wow. Or waited later in the year to buy or are now just dealing with the new rates that we have. There are some things you can do. I know you've probably talked about this before, but people are still doing rate buy downs right now. Okay. In resale homes, I know that's pretty common. We, we do more two ones right now. Yeah. 
Yeah. With rate buy downs, like specifically with certain builders, uh, big builders, they might even offer some incentives. And we can go into that in a little bit. But right now, especially when you walk into a new builder, since they're kind of feeling the pain, they're given a lot of incentives. Hey, you know, not just price, but hey, do you want that 2 1 buy down? <laughs> you know, uh, or even just a, a regular rate buy down, or hey, we'll give you 10K towards your rate buy down, whatever that looks like, however they want to structure it. But there's a lot more options like that if you're coming wow. into the market for a new build. And then just so you guys who's tuning in for the first time, the 2-1 buy down means that you're prepaying 2% and it's not the buyer, it's the seller. So in this case, it would be the actual builder mm -hmm. would credit 2% off the actual purchase price into, so then if your interest rate will quote at 7.5, first year it'll be 5.5, then mm -hmm. it'll go 6.5 and, and then back to 7.5. And, and the reason why they do that is because they I think that Jerome Powell is going to pivot in the beginning of 2023 and then, then the rates will magically go back to 5% and yeah. they'll win. But there's actually some lenders right now that actually do 3 to one buy down. Yes. Which yeah. is like pretty nuts if you think about it. But in a way, a seller is losing a ton of funds. Yeah. So yeah. I know like when you build a house, you already have such a thin margin. Mm -hmm. Like how can the new build afford giving so much incentive yeah. when like two, three months ago, like even you, you couldn't even get a housing contract with somebody. Right. Non-refundable deposit. You got to put it in right now. Yeah. It's just nuts. Yeah, like beginning of this year, it was like uh, walking to a new community. They're like, good luck, stand in line. You know, they're like, oh, welcome. We're glad you're here. Feel free to walk the models. Wow. Here's the information, but we have nothing ready unless you want to wait for our next, what they would call phase releases. So typically most of these builders, we're talking about track homes, um, you know, any price point it could be starting 450, 500 up to the million dollar price point or up, they'll release a few phases. So some builders, it's really common to see they'll have three, four, five or more lots. Once they sell those lots out, those go into construction. Then they do what's called a new phase release. Then they release the next, you know, one, two, three, four wow. lots or whatever it is. So they kind of did it in phases. Wow. Um, some builders were like, forget the phases. As we're selling, we're building, we're selling, we're building. They're pushing. They're pushing, you wow. know. They knew it's coming. So it's all really how their business model is structured, right? They're just like, uh, you know, you get what you pay for. Yeah. So there's some builders out there. Uh, they're kind of like run and gun. They're just pumping them. They're pumping them. You get a better price, you know, like you'll look at the overall area. Let's say we're talking about Folsom, right? Big new community right now is Folsom Ranch, where all that, if you're driving Highway 50, you look to your right side. Oh, yeah, they're pushing right now. They're crazy. Yeah, they're, it's just all construction, right? And so depending on the builder in that area, there's different price points. You could get a KB home, kind of like entry-level pricing for that area, still like 650, 700K, which wow. <laughs> is not really entry-level pricing, <laughs> but for the area it is, right? Wow. Or you can go to a more upscale builder like, I don't know, new home company or uh, Toll Brothers, luxury, and you're paying close to a mil or over a mil if you have a view Wow, for a new construction home. And that's not necessarily custom. So it can change drastically, but what I'm saying is some of them are like run and gun, again, pushing homes, uh, lower pricing, like just building them, and others, they're gonna take a little bit more time, a little bit more high quality materials. You'll see that, you'll feel that in the upgrades, but at the end of the day, I mean, it's still kind of um, track home style in a way. Some are semi-custom, but it's not its not too crazy on the customizations there. But it's its pretty much how it was like back in the days when they're building the uh, Citrus Heights, the Antelopes. Right. Yeah. And then now we're getting there. We're going to and start remodeling and fixing. We're pretty much the builders yeah. off the You're, off the, the, you're builders. the secondary we're, builder. <laughs> we're the touch-up crew. <laughs> I, love I love that. That, <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was, that was good. Cheers. Cheers. Some people were asking like, hey, I've been uh, contemplating between, because obviously the market is like where it's at right now. Yeah. But some clients and actual people actually are in a position of buying. And the reason why they're buying and not buying it for 12 months, they're buying it for a long term. Mm -hmm. They understand that, hey, today is the best time to buy a house compared to what, six months ago because the price did shift already 10, 15%. Right. So like if you're buying with cash, like it's a great time to buy. Yeah. But when it comes in a house that is on a model that has been used and is just been sold by in a regular community, mm -hmm. why would somebody go and buy a brand new build for 600K when there's actually are homes selling for 600K over the over that 50 is still in Folsom, but it's just not brand new. Yeah. What's the benefits of going new versus uh, the regular traditional home? Yeah, I mean, it really depends on the, the consumer, the client, the buyer, the wants and needs, really that's what it breaks down to. Um, also, 
affordability, right? Why do we buy, some people prefer buying a brand new car from the dealership and then other people prefer to buy a resale car or sometimes even a salvage. <laughs> yeah. I know, but like if you put the car perspective, you know for a fact the second you buy a car brand new, you lose money right away. The yeah. second you exit. Yeah, yeah, but it's... This is it's, the same but, thing when you buy a house brand new, you lose the value the second you buy? Mm, I wouldn't say so, but it depends on the market, right? <laughs> if someone got into contract earlier this year, they saved on that rate, but now the builder's been doing price reductions for the last few months. Wow. Actually, a survey came out, I was just reading this morning, 83% of new home builders have done some sort of price reduction on their homes this year. Wow, that's not even including the incentives. That Yeah, that's just price reductions. So wow. on base price, okay? So when we're seeing that kind of change, you know, that person may have lost that, you know, buying off the lot feel. Uh, but really what it comes down to is the feel, right? Um, also schools. So I will say like specifically for the Sacramento region, typically we don't really get our schools revamped or new schools built as much in older regions. Once in a while you'll see that, but not typically. Sacramento, it's kind of the new schools really only come into the brand new areas. So a lot of the clients that I have reaching out to me or people shifting from like a big, big flow for us is people from the Bay Area or even other states. Typically, they want to consider brand new construction first because they know they're getting into a new area. So they know like if they don't necessarily know the Sacramento region, they're like, hey, this is probably still a pretty good overall quality spot to buy because it's brand new. It's still being developed. Gotcha. There's future value. Also, the second thing, like I mentioned, is schools for people. They have younger kids, elementary, middle, high school. They're really paying attention to school ratings because they want their kids to be in good public schools. So being in a new or newer area kind of grants them that, right? And of course, there's variables with that. But typically, there's new schools either coming in or already there. So that's a big draw for a lot of people. Gotcha. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, if you look in from perspective that you don't know anything about the area and you want to just get in into yeah. something that you don't literally don't want to fix anything. Yeah. Just move in ready. And yeah. I believe the new builds, they come with like a big warranty, right? On the homes. Yeah. So typically, I mean, there most builders uh, do like a 10 year structural warranty. So if there's which issues. Which is amazing. With, yeah. So if there's like foundation issues or this and that, there's a 10 year structural. Which right? is amazing because if you buy a house right off MLS without being a new, there is no 10 years is just a regular 12 mm -hmm. months right. which you have to buy a warranty with it yeah. and somehow and even though it and those home really warranties cover. are whack yeah like, but you know. so that could be another a good yeah. reason why somebody goes with new construction because they just don't want to deal with all the yeah. nuances and then repairs and all stuff yeah. like that and you'd be surprised like people a lot of people that when they're buying new builds they're the type of people that they just want to work you know or raise their family or do their profession and they don't want to worry about their AC going out. It's true. They don't want to worry about dry rot. They don't want to worry about like different maintenances that comes with home ownership, especially on older homes, right? Um, and you really realize that once you buy a home, you're like, oh shoot, all right, my roof, you know, it's getting near the age or my <laughs> AC. Started, like you just finished one and keep yeah, going. Yeah, or your windows are dated or whatever it might be, right? Plumbing back though. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Stuff like that happens with older homes, even if it's fully remodeled. Yeah, it just true. happens, yeah. you know? there's Not everybody does everything to the home. No, because the sewer line originally is yeah. still original. You're not going to dig out the sewer line. Yeah, there's no point until it needs to be. Exactly, so. and that could be like 50, 60, 70 years old mm -hmm. compared to a brand new one. Yeah. And then it, yeah. so also a big shout out if you're buying a home over 40 years old you should for sure get a sewer line <laughs> inspection that's, that's a just a free tip right there for you guys um buying homes so that's really the benefits of new homes again it's also the community people might you know certain areas might have like new shopping centers coming in besides the schools how often uh, does it really happen like when you come in like Folsom right now we have the i think it's the palladio right yep so like we have the plot, it's a beautiful place. They have Makuni yeah. there, sushi, they Big got coffees. Yeah, yeah, shout out to Makuni, the best sushi in Sacramento. Yeah. Uh, they have a lot of, even a theater there and a hangout right. place. So by building so many more homes, what else enters the market for Folsom? What's more, what's the upside there? Because by adding, how many homes do you, uh, Folsom adding right now? So overall, the master plan is calling for about 11,000 brand new homes. So imagine 11,000 families. Yeah. Let's but that's, say, I mean, that's going to be over years and years yeah. and years. So 11,000 families, let's say one or two kids each, let's say one. That's a lot of people going to be influx coming in into the Folsom area. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So schools, parks, more fees, right? Yeah. Because I know for a fact, like when you buy a house here, you pay 1% tax, right? Right. How is it different when you buy a brand new construction? 
So brand new construction, this is one thing that you guys really want to pay attention to if you're thinking about a brand new home is that everyone has a different tax rate or what we would call Melarus or special assessment taxes. Okay. So those are basically um, outstanding um, debts that need to be paid. And the way it's paid in California is basically the community pays for it. For that new school coming in, that new fire station coming in, maybe there's a police station, uh, maybe there are certain street lights or street work that needs to be done. That is not just paid by builders, it's also taken on by the community. So that wow. actually keeps new communities going. And the way it's paid for is by essentially you being a homeowner in that community. Wow. So it's kind of interesting, like if we're thinking about Folsom Ranch, right? This is one builder. This is another builder down the street. These, based on where they're located, I mean, literally, they could be a quarter mile from each other, like super close building their own thing. And they could have different Melarus. This guy could be $300 a month. These guys could be $200 a month. Wow. So based on which community, which builder you go with, you have variable um, taxes like that. And then in Folsom Ranch, on some of the communities, I've seen some of the taxes when you actually work in, work it all and uh, look at the lump sum, essentially it rounds up to about 1.75, 1.8% on their tax rate. Wow. So that's essentially so ongoing. Wow. So that's near double on your for? base tax. huh? How long is it for? So, I mean, it's different. And this is funny. You'll talk to a lot of people and they'll be like, oh, yeah, we have this term of like, you know, 20, 25, 30 years. But the reality is I tell people don't bank on that going away no, it's, and during yeah. your homeownership of that. You know, you're gonna sell it in the next five, ten years anyway. So like you gotta pay. So, so I would just say like the cost. Yeah, just just know that that's basically your cost ongoing. Wow. Yeah. So on top of that too, again, this is like kind of the big three things I look out for is there Melarus special assessments, which almost every new build in our area has. I'll say the average for those is running roughly about two fifty a month when you break it down. Could be more, could be less. I've seen some as low as like sixty, seventy bucks, which is fire oh, that's if you can get that but i've seen some as high in the 400s and up which is crazy that's a lot. and then if you add in if that community has this is the next one is like hoa that's a big one you should look out for uh because hoa don't I mean, you get those costs before you sign it on the yeah yeah you'll know all those but usually people don't pay attention to because they're looking at the beautiful home or the sticker price on the website 399 <laughs> <laughs> yeah the 0.99 <laughs> <laughs> marketing walk, tactic then yeah. they walk away 699 yeah <laughs> with an 800 bucks fee yeah. every month yeah so it could get pretty hefty and then like the third big expense that i would consider is that okay when you walk into a new build let's say let's say you didn't get the quicker move and let's say you're waiting for it to be bill over time is that you see the base sticker price let's say the home's listed for like 690k whatever it is um the upgrades is really where they're going to get you because builders make a ton of money on upgrades they Change upcharge orders. yeah so if you get the nice you know lvp flooring if you get the nice hardwood flooring, get the white oak looking flooring, I mean, that's a boom up in wow. price. How right? much do, I mean, like really, like what's the, I mean, I guess, so technically if they says 399, they're pretty much selling you a shell, just like a shelf. Yeah. And you're well, like, you want floors? Extra. You want <laughs> toilet to sit on? Extra. <laughs> <laughs> you want this window? Extra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you don't get, Silver, win you don't get windows, gold. you don't get toilets, you don't get floors. No, I'm just kidding. They. <laughs> They actually include a lot of like basic upgrades. They might give you a few different options, but the reality is once you see those, you're like, this doesn't feel like a new home. Just like, for like fifty dollars a month extra. It's like it's like <laughs> those colors that almost make you want to upgrade because you like, dude, this was in style fifteen years ago. Like no one really uses wow. brown right but now. But that's how they get the crazy cheap discount. Yeah. Because they're buying stuff that nobody else buys. Mm -hmm. They go into those manufacturers, like, hey, I'll buy all of it. I'm building out Folsom. <laughs> like, you put this in Folsom? Yeah. I thought we have people buying this for South Sac Iraq. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And he's like, don't worry. We'll sell this and we'll come back to yeah, those yeah. custom floors from you. That's heck of funny. That's how, you, that's how they get you. You better stay out and be on the lookout. They got you. This is why we got Sam on the show because me personally, I okay when it comes to like the regular traditional fix and flip finding deals, right? Yeah. I am like, zero when it comes to brand new subdivision construction. And that's why I want to bring somebody who is amazing. So shout out to Sam. Thank you so much. If you love this content, smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. And don't forget to subscribe. That's the super easy way to thank the channel. But man, Sam, honestly, you're spitting out fire. I love it. Or it's just the coffee kicking <laughs> in. <laughs> but I... Also, another thing I notice when I'm driving up the 80, when I come back home to yeah. Newcastle, I see a bunch of billboards. 
with new build constructions. Right. I've never seen that before. Yeah. Which is insane. So they're really desperate because they have a lot of homes going to be in the market. Yeah. So they already have quite a bit of inventory. And uh, kind of before we go too far the on the last big cost that I was telling you about, uh, the other one is you want to consider is not just the upgrades, but also they're usually not including the price of the solar. Wait, I thought the solar was supposed to be coming already in the cost of the home. No. So check this out. So with new builds, uh, they usually don't put that solar cost. They'll kind of put it in like what a, a line below. What a rug pull. So like, you know, as of wow. I, it was 2020, California mandated all new homes, all have new to, construction yeah. have to have solar, right? Going green. And so because of that, now all these new homes are like, well, they don't want to eat that cost. That's insane. Because you know how much solar costs. Like, it's pricey. Yeah. So depending on the size of the home, how much kilowatt, uh, size of the panels it needs, whatnot, they'll usually do like a minimal size. So it's not really going to... Just one suffi- panel should be enough for <laughs> <Yeah>. you. <laughs> they kind of do They kind of do minimum. Some builders do a little bit more, but it's not going to be like enough to take all your energy, yeah. energy consumption. So um, you can see those panels. Uh, they give you the option, basically. They're like, okay, you can either buy out the panels Jesus. directly and just work it into your overall home loan. So if your home's 600, now you can add the 15K. Now it's 615 is your purchase price. You can either buy it out like that or you can lease it. And some even have like the power purchase lease agreement, which... I'm not really a fan of, or I'm not. Even, I've never been a fan of leasing, but for some people, they prefer that, especially if they only think they're going to live in the home two, three years, or whatnot, transfer into something else. So maybe that might make sense. But your lease can be anywhere from like as low as I've seen 60, 70, 80 bucks a month, all the way up to like 120, 150 a month wow. for the lease. Um, and then also like if you just purchase it. So that's also another big cost that most people don't consider. Uh, there are a few builders that might just include it in their overall price, but very few. So. There you go. That's a, I thought that was like, hey, you know, it's 399 with solar. But then if yeah. you have to pay for it and they're still getting for cheap yeah, solar. Bro, where are you seeing where are you seeing homes for sale right now no, for I 399? Mean, like, <laughs> I got one. Come on. I got one in our hands right yeah. now. 399. Uh, three bedroom, two bath, a thousand forty five. Go check foot. it out. Check, check it out. Link down below. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like like all jokes aside, I mean like if you think about it. The government put it out there, say, hey, okay, we're gonna go green. Yeah. Everybody, everybody get the solar. You get a solar, you, you get, get a solar, you get a solar. But then like they pass the cost on to you. Mm-hmm. So like I mean, I think based on this conversation right now, like it's I think it's pretty profitable to be a builder. <sighs> I mean, if you buy in bulk, you pretty much create well four or five plans. The house mm-hmm. looks mm-hmm. the same and you just alternate every other house. And the funny part is if you pay attention, so some of these builders that I mentioned earlier, they're national builders, right? Okay. They have the same floor plans that they're building in like Utah. No way. Nevada. No way. They'll have different elevations. So the, the face of the home is slightly different to match the style of that area. Wow. It's just elevation. It's very simple. The face. But the floor plans will be relatively the same That's on insane. a lot of them. They'll charge you like 300K more. <laughs> Pretty much you for nothing. Live. So yeah. why build here then? Like if that's the case, like, I mean, technically, why build anywhere else than Cali in that point? Because you can just yeah. sell it here for way more than what you do in Alabama or Tennessee. Yeah. True. But I mean, these are these are behemoth companies. Like they're wow. national. So just like you guys want to build and grow, you're going to end up in other places, right? Yeah, even but if we don't charge them. For, like we're going to pass the solar on you. Yeah. Well, those states probably don't even have required solar. So that's another thing. Yeah. Also, if you buy solar and your house is a fixer, don't lease it. Pay it off. Because it's very hard t- for me to transfer back into RNA. Because <laughs> it's a lease. I got to take it on. I don't even own it. Yeah. So we had a situation. We bought a house. Mm-hmm. Had a solar. Yeah. And we're like, oh, what do you want? we don't want it. Because it's like, it was lease. I'm like, what am I going to... Nobody wants nobody it. Nobody wants it. Those make for a okay, tough if sale. If it's paid, it's fine. Then they had to call the company. Uh, and then... Do a whole transfer. Not even a transfer. I'm like, take it out. Like, I don't want it. And then they took it out. Like, then a month like and a half we're later. not liable for the roof. There's not so like a bunch of a bunch of holes, and it was like probably like three grand to that shut up. There you go. It is what it is. Yeah. So I'm not really crazy about those, but back to I think you mentioned about inventory. So there's definitely a lot more inventory. Like we said earlier this year, last year, the year before, it was like get in line unless for some reason you were already pre-approved with the builder and you were kind of following up with them kind of like how we were talking about rolexes earlier like you want to if you want a rolex you got to be following up looking out in the market always like looking for one then you can get a deal on one that's true so same thing same with the home or the community that you wanted to buy in you got to follow up be pre-approved 
have the cash, and then they'll maybe call you if someone canceled their contract, some reason a house didn't work out for somebody, they put you next in line, you could take over that contract. Well, let me ask you this about the cash you're talking about. I know for a fact when you buy a house, you, you can do as little as 3% down. Yeah. What about for new build? What's the requirements? Like somebody's like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna buy a new build. What's the requirement for? Same financing. Same thing. Same financing options. Um, if you use their builder, typically the new builds around here really push, really push for their uh, lender to be used. Why? Uh, because I think it's in-house a lot of times, <laughs> you know, and they want to funnel through their own people. I mean, there's a, there's a very um, practical side too, because if they know that you ran through their, um, their, their lender, their pre-approved uh, preferred lender, I should say, then they know that you actually are qualified. Cause gotcha. you know, even in the way the market's been the pace, you know, you've, you know, there's people, people out shopping in the market, they got pre-approvals, but that lender didn't do their homework. And that wow. person goes to the table to buy the house or they're in contract for a week, two weeks, three weeks, and we can't get clear to close on the loan because they have some issues with their financing. Wow. And that's happened. I don't know if you guys probably experienced that based on the amount of volume you do. Yeah, we did. We actually had so, a couple of, with the job losses. We actually were like literally like a week away from closing a house. Yeah. And I, I just lost my house. I just got let go. Company shut down. And then we had to put it back on market and find a different buyer. But yeah. it happens all the time. So that's why they really push for that. But then they also say like, oh, if you use our lender, we'll give you some sort of incentives. You know, so they really want to keep it in-house and everybody close. Yeah. Let me ask you this. You're saying they give you incentive. Wouldn't it be like they're taking instead of, well, my lender charges three points and mm. you can go get somebody one point, but we'll give you one point back. Mm. So technically they're taking your money from one pocket, putting it in a different pocket. And I mean, charging you for the solar. Isn't that the finance world? <laughs> I know, but like you can go, like the beautiful thing about finances, it's like free country. You yeah. can pick, choose whoever you want. Sally, Joe, yeah. BFA, Chase, Wells, a broker. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, I just had David Osborne. Yeah. He actually a local broker. Right. So like you get to choose who you want. But like if I... If they're gonna give me 3K credit on the new build, like, you know, say if you use a preferred, I can go to Dave and he's gonna give me, hey, I'll give you 5K cheaper. Yeah. Why not? That's what I would do. Yeah, you can choose. No, but you they're can. They're pushing, pushing you to. They're pushing. You can still choose how, your own lender. Because it goes from one pocket on there to another pocket yeah. of, of theirs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the pace just, the pace has definitely changed over the last few months, like dramatically. Like now, the reps, the agents that represent these communities, now call me, text me, Sam, can you visit our community? You should wow. check out our new model tours. Hey, we just got this one out of contract. Thought you might have a client for it. Boom, boom. These are the incentives we're having. Oh, by the way, commissions are up to this percent now. Or no. hey, we're even doing a bonus. I'm like, come <laughs> on, let's go. Well, I'm going to give it to you. Like out of all the people, like you actually went into the construction before everybody else. Yeah. So that's why you're able to be so successful at what you do is because you put in so much, so much work into mm -hmm. it guys sam has youtube channel we'll link it go check it out he posts every single week he actually go live mm -hmm. and amazing amazing content i was actually one of his first subscribers hey so definitely yeah. check it out for me i would always like to get a wedge deal i always yeah. preach uh here on the channel like hey guys rates gonna go up we had 0.75 interest rate cpi mm -hmm. data come out today 7.7 percent mm -hmm. was uh, inflation actually slightly went down which is amazing and if uh, we're gonna have december hike which it, they were leaning towards more towards the 75 basis points yeah but now it looks like if you check up there online which we're, we're linking down it they're leaning more towards a 50 basis points mm -hmm. and if they do that and inflation still goes down in december then the next hike will be February, they'll do a quarter. And if that projected goes as good, then hopefully, fingers crossed, 2023, maybe second half of 2023, yeah. we will see some kind of rate, rate decrease. But hey, by the time we get to it, we could be in like nine, 10% interest rates. Yeah. So when you're talking about a wedge deal, I, I'm the same way. Uh, I'm always looking for a deal. I am. I'm, I'm built that way. I was raised that way, right? Um, I've also done quite a few flip properties. We've done few, quite a few transactions. I also sell a lot of resale used homes. So I'm very familiar and I'm still totally in that market. You know, it's just new builds. It's kind of like a niche that like worked, you know? Um, but the way you can wedge a deal in the new build market is they're giving a lot more incentive. So like 
Because the resale market, sellers still have a certain perspective. If you're a seller, what, you sell one home every five, 10 years? What do you really know about the market? And I'm not saying that, you know, condescendingly, I'm just saying like the reality is unless you're very uh, aware and updated on the market, like your normal person is not really staying up to date with the housing market. Yeah, they're just gonna know that my neighbor sold for 500K two exactly. months ago. Exactly, so the mentality of a lot of sellers right now is like, hey, my, you know, that guy sold down the street for a million bucks, I am expecting that same million bucks. Yeah. The market, you know, regardless of what rates have done, you know, like I, I have appointments with sellers all the time and they say, well, rates are up. It is what it is. <laughs> In my day, they were 14%. And I'm like, you're absolutely right. But the prices were <laughs> where they are now. And so that it's kind of like getting the, to pull back and be like, okay, I even like run monthly payments sometimes. I'm like, okay, your home is uh, was worth a million dollars earlier this year based on your, your neighbor selling for this much. Now with this new rate, look at how much someone's payment went up. You push the affordability. Yeah, the it's all about the, it's all about the affordability. So a lot of people don't think in that perspective. But ev as you know, every home buyer that comes to the home, they might like it, they might love it, but at the end of the day, they're talking to their lender and they're getting their numbers and say like, what's our monthly payment on this getting, home? They're getting scared out of their minds. Exactly. And so um, the way you can wedge or hedge yourself, I guess, kind of with the ongoing market right now is basically some builders, some new builders are giving way bigger incentives, slashing the prices way more because of their biz mo business model is they want to keep pushing, they want to keep selling. Wow. So they might really minimize their margins on those, especially quick moving homes right now. These are the deals. I, if I was in the market as a new home, new home buyer, I wouldn't be buying that dirt lot. I would not be. Okay. I wouldn't be buying that dirt lot and waiting that six, nine, 12 months, sometimes more for luxury. It could be up to 18 months on like a luxury home. To build from scratch? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. So I would go for the quicker moving. I would look for the stuff that's already almost complete or just going to be complete in the next month or two because those are going to be those quick move-in homes and that's their stacked inventory. Builders do not like when they're stacked inventory just sitting on the market. They hate that. They don't want to be on the MLS. They want to avoid the MLS because... You rarely see new homes on MLS. Super yeah, but rare. now they started really posting them, especially on like major websites like Redfin, uh, Zillow, stuff like that. So pay attention to that. But I would say those quick move-ins... Those are the ones the builders are really like, we want to let them go. So right now, now that the market's cooled off and now that they're like, all right, you know, write us an offer. Like they're actually open to offers. You know that? They would never be open to offer. The price is the price, you know? In fact, why don't you, some of them had even, their offer system was getting a bid going. No way. So they'll pump out an email and they say, hey, this home is listed for 550 and they would get like multiple bids and they'll see who would hire, bid the highest on that new build. Wow. Literally, some of them did that. So now, if you can go with that quicker move and that sta standing inventory, some of these builders are like, all right, give us an offer. Let's work. Wow. What kind of incentives can we give you? Can we give you that 2-1 buy down? Or can we give you a regular buy down? Or, hey, uh, do you prefer to take 10K and just get your closing costs covered? Wow. Yeah. They're trying to do everything to get you the So just closing. to give you guys an idea, and this is kind of like not all of them, but this is a like a solid example. I just got a home into contract a few weeks ago, um, Elk Grove area, new construction home. It was a quick move in. That home earlier this year was listed about seven ninety three, if I'm not mistaken. Wow. We got it in contract at seven oh four after all the incentives. Wow. So from seven ninety three to seven oh four. Eighty nine K. Yeah. Price. Wow. Yeah. That's so, amazing. So yeah, that I mean, and uh it's funny because like even the builder, like the reps were like no, this is not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> like literally. Not today. Yeah. Not today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we're like back and forth four or five days. Like I was already getting tired. I'm like, I'm sick of having these calls. We just kept pushing, pushing, and pushing, And you just pushing. take it or leave it, huh? Finally, they, they took it. After all their incentives, they, they had all these promos and whatever going on, but we still wow. squeezed it, squeezed it, squeezed it. Oh, that's a pretty solid deal. I think that's a great deal for yeah. brand new. Yeah, and especially if you're looking at brand new Elk Grove right now, you can't pick anything up. Like, I mean, you can in the 700s, but it ain't going to be Yeah, but Elk Grove is really rough. popular. I mean, you Super look, popular. It's everybody, when it comes in from even Bay Area, they move, they either Folsom or Elk Grove. They're not yeah. even looking like Roosevelt, nothing. 
Mm -hmm. Some are getting more because now we have YouTube, we have different search engines or whatever. So like when people are coming in, because I, I work with a lot of clients that are flowing into town. And so usually I give them the breakdown, the consultation. I'm like, well, what's your lifestyle like? What do you, Where do you commute to? Where do you work, live, play, all that fun stuff, right? But a lot of them now, yeah, typically like exactly what you said, Elk Grove, Folsom. Earlier was more like Natomas, especially Natomas for investors. Really popular yeah, back in the days. especially for investors. Not so much anymore. Um, uh, as far as what I'm getting, there's and just then, not much growth in the Thomas area as it, of right now. It kind of stunted it, a little it bit. It slowed down. Because yeah. I know we have the Folsom, I believe Intel's there and a, a lot of, I think Folsom has one of the best schools in the whole area. Yep. So they invest a lot into kids there. So yeah. a lot of people want to have, provide the best education you mm -hmm. can for your, for your child. Unless you go into like Joshua when it's like, you know, you have to pay insane amount every month yeah. in the private schools. Right. And so that's exactly it is like Folsom also is kind of already um, like a, I, I call it not just like another city in Sacramento. It's kind of a brand. Wow. Like you pay to live there. The reality Sounds is. expensive. It does. <laughs> <laughs> Hit me up. <laughs> uh, so it's a little bit pricier, but you get that feel. I mean, it's nice when you're there. No, Folsom right? is beautiful. I'm not going to yeah. lie. Like even like when you pull, pull up on that on the 50 and you just turn around when you come back, you have the, the whole view of Sacramento. Yeah. It's the beginning the of the. going down. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's the beginning of the foothills. It's a lot of new construction. And even the older stuff that's there, everything is like well-maintained taken care yeah, of everything's clean. you know yeah. so it's different um but usually again when people are moving into areas they want well, they want to see like what's up and coming what's new if they don't know yeah you know so that's just kind of how it is but i i truly do love how you, your sales tactic how you how you, you're just saying it if somebody comes in you're like what do you like because you really want to replicate their home style where they're from yeah. into here so if you know they're part of they love the gym and they love to go tennis yeah they love the hiking Folsom. Yeah, you want like restaurants, more like um, different type of cuisines. I'll grow, mm -hmm. so it's kind of cool because then you tailor their existing living, what they're moving from, to make yeah. you feel a little bit more homey. Yeah, and that right there, it's like wow, this guy put in, you know, yeah, a little bit more effort into find something that would feel like home. Mm -hmm. And I think it's special. I think it's really smart. I've had I've had some people like even move out of state. I had this like amazing couple from Texas actually one time. And he was dead set on like Folsom. He's like, this is it. This is where I want to be. I'm like, that's fine. Started talking to him. And I started like, okay, what are you into? Where have you been? And then he was like, okay, my second would be Rockland. I'm like, okay, we can do that. And then I'm like, okay. I'm like, but what are you looking for? This and that. And then he started telling me what he wants, the view, the feel, the type of people he wants in his community. What kind of people? Uh, he wanted more like family friendly community. Like he wanted to know his neighbors. Okay. You know, and in Sacramento, that's not, it's not everywhere. You got to like go that. a little bit up north, more where like Republicans are. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess where they landed. Bought Rockland. them a brand new home with the view in Lincoln. No way. Amazing luxury home view right outside of Cataverdera, golf course, wow. all that stuff. So, and they, and they love it. And we're like still good friends. I go over there for lunch and filet mignon once in a while. It's nice. Hey, uh, send me the calendar <laughs> invite, paul at propertysalesgroup.com. Yeah. I'm available. After for six. steaks anytime yeah just let yeah. me know whenever sam goes i go yep let's go <laughs> just so much information but like right now we're sitting it's november is it still a good time to buy brand new construction right now knowing that we're gonna have another ray hike and another one possibly yeah so it's like this question gets asked right you get even asked this in the resale market all day i get asked this every day so it really depends on the person's situation with rates going up you know, you've seen as a home buyer right now, you've probably seen how much your affordability has changed. So you've seen people's payments jump even from like summer or late springtime, 500, 700 bucks, thousand bucks on some homes, right? That's huge. I always tell people like, what's your timing like? If you're looking to buy in the next three, six months, you know you need to, your lease is up, your lease is expensive. Rent hasn't really gone down. That's it, the other thing. Yeah, it hasn't gone down. A little it's, bit, it's a little tipping. bit. It's softening, but it's not, Really, I, I personally don't see that it's perfectly coordinating with house prices going down. Oh, definitely not. Yeah. So you rent's still, still high. Rent's still K. strong. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of builders right now that are building homes 
and, uh, and we're not talking about these track homes, kind of like big developments. We're talking about like one at a time builders. Some of them are like, forget this. I'm just going to rent this house out. Like I'm not going to sell in this no, market. Obviously, if you're all in a million bucks and you're selling for two million to so afford even a million dollar property, like your payment is going to be like 12K a month. Yeah. If you put minimalistic down payment. Yeah. And you got to get a jumbo loan, insurers are high too. So it, it makes sense, but yeah. still you tie up so much capital. It just, ah, it hurts. <laughs> you know from personal experience <laughs> no it's just like I, it just hurts because it's just so, so much so my recommendation always to people is it depends on the personal situation I never tell people like yes just buy you know just buy like how it was the last two years if you can buy anything just buy it's gonna be up right there was a lot of speculation in the market you, you remember that yeah I was like oh yeah three six months it's gonna be up three six months it's gonna be up you know yeah. everyone was thinking that way but we all knew that it was time for change so my thing is this is like okay you know what you can get pre-approved for that $500,000 home right now with a 7% interest rate. Can you really take the cost of that interest rate going to 8, 9% and still get that home? You know, pricing may adjust more, but that's not something we can bank on. I personally think it will cool off a little bit more, especially like this winter. Um, but I think that also there's this seasonal approach, like, right, we're going into the winter, fall season. Spring, if rates don't ticker up like you're saying they might, let's say they even ticker back a little bit. I think that the market is going to kind of kick into a little bit of a momentum for springtime, like it naturally does. But if rates keep going up, I don't think it's going to be the same spring that we've experienced in previous years. I mean, it's hard to say, uh, but it's also one of those things, like if you look at it, I think it's Warren Buffett that says like, be greedy when everyone is fearful and be fearful when everyone is greedy. Yeah. I think right now everyone is fearful. Well, we got to have a true capitulation. Yeah. Like full on, like when everybody, because like right now you drive, you don't really see a lot of homes in the market. There's a lot, it's coming. But I think the there's a huge increase in yeah, homes. But there's a when it's gonna be a true fear. I I believe is when you're gonna drive on your neighborhood, and before you even get to your house on Main Street, you're gonna see ten homes for sale. Mm. That right there is a good sign. It's a true fear because everybody's selling. Mm. And then what you can do is you can submit those ten offers. They're asking yeah. 400, slap a 200k off. I mean, heck, I'm buying homes right now in Roosevelt. Yeah. For 370. 2,000 square foot backs up into a Kirby Creek. You going to sell me that house? <laughs> For you, brother, Good 600. Deal. <laughs> <laughs> and then also it has carpet. We can talk about upgrades. Uh, <laughs> but this doesn't have solar, which is oh, amazing. Oh, man. <laughs> Forget that. <laughs> I'll buy a new build. <laughs> well, all, speaking of new builds, right now, if somebody's watching and they're like, you know what? They will have a question. What's the minimum purchase price? Like right now, if I want to get in, into, I want to buy the cheapest one, and get it into a new build when it comes in like the specs. What's the the lowest price so far <clears> you've seen uh, in the past, like say a couple of weeks? So, I mean, there's definitely like townhomes and condos that are selling. Like if we mentioned in Atomas, you can get those. But if we're talking about single family homes, standard, decent backyard, um, like right now in West Roseville, there's certain communities for about 550, 600, you could pick up a new That's home. That's the cheapest one right now? About. Okay. Yeah. You might get it a little bit under that if the, if you really like haggle with so them, but we're talking about a standard home like sixteen hundred to yeah, eighteen hundred square feet. Roosevelt six hundred. What about Folsom? What's the minimum? What's the cheapest one in Folsom right now? Most uh, Folsom like cheapest. You're probably looking at like six fifty ish. So fifty k and you're in Folsom. Um, fifty to a hundred. Yeah, I mean it's definitely a step up in price. Okay. What about uh, also Oak Grove? also the Melaroos? I know about that's Grove, the thing yeah. too. Is what they're higher in Folsom. Oak Grove? Elk Grove, um, right now, as far as what I've seen, as far as like the best deals in Elk Grove, but I would say like in the sevens, low okay. sevens. So Elk Grove, seven, full. Of course, there's a few outliers, but yeah. I'm not talking about, because also there's homes out there that are being built. They're like the alley load style homes, very tight or patio style where they don't gotcha. really have a backyard. Like back I don't really want to include those because for some people, that's a, they don't like it's those. Other people, yeah, other people really like them, but some yeah. people just don't like them at all. I mean, you want to have some privacy. I mean, if you take yeah. a shower, and <laughs> <laughs> it's good to know for somebody out there because if you're looking for a brand new home and you only have proof for 400K, you're out of luck. Yeah. But you can find a house that you can get in for 400. Yep. North Highlands would be great for you. South Sac Iraq. You can even get into <laughs> Citrus Heights. Yeah. Uh, probably not 95601, but maybe 95621 area, which is closer to uh, the Greenback. Probably get in about 400K. Mm -hmm. You can get into Antelope area for about 400 right now. Yep. So it kind of gives a little more perspective for the audience. That like, look, what are my options out there? Like, I'm only approved for this amount. Yeah. But you know what? If I approve for 800K, 600K right now, maybe it's a good way of getting in and milking that builder so much. The producers 
<laughs> dollar sign. You know what I mean? It gives yeah. you more incentive because, yeah. or guys, remember this is very, very important. Great deals today is okay deals in the future. Mm. You might get an amazing deal right now with the new builder. Six months down the road, the rates keep going and yeah. you're, you're literally at break even point because they just keep slicing price. So the time is on your side. But mm -hmm. if you're like, like Sam was saying, I'm, I'm, my lease is up in January. I got to get out. I can't find rent. Yeah. Then, yeah, maybe look into it. But don't buy a house if you're not going to live there for a long period of time. If you're there yeah. for a, a year or two, it's not worth it. Yeah. Don't buy. I tell people, yeah, don't buy on speculation. And what I mean by that is like short-term thinking. Absolutely. You know, that, hey, one, two years, we're going to be up in equity. We'll sell this, move on to the next one. I wouldn't be buying like that. Um, I even bought a house earlier this year, so I'm not just... No way. Yeah. Where do you live now? Huh? I'm not going to say it on this code? podcast. <laughs> Come through. Well, why not? <laughs> when you buy a house, you get 2.5% commission when you, when, you sign, when, you, when you buy and sell. 2.5%. What about when you get an actual client signed for a brand new build? What do they pay right now? So this was the problem with new builds for a while, and this is like... Well, I also didn't want to focus too much on them for a while is when the market was like piping hot and they had people just walking through the doors getting calls left and right. They were starting to decrease commissions. Some even took them away. Like for instance, like a builder like Lennar, even till now on a lot of their lot sales, like they have no commission. Wow. So I'll typically not go and sell over there. You know, if I have really a client that's like really interested in whatnot, I'll still like, okay, provide the info. Give my feedback, Man. my bias feed, but that's one. But others, I mean, I've seen some like chop it down to one, 1 1.5, 2%. But now the market's changed. Like they're definitely bringing it back wow. up, floating it back up. Uh, I'm getting like emails and calls like, hey, just want to let you know. We bumped it to two, bumped it to 2.5. No way. One the other day was like, hey, if you just sell one of our houses, I'll give you 2.5 plus a 3K bonus. No way. And I'm like, what do I do with this bonus? Go to Mexico? <laughs> Just kidding. Just buy uh, yourself a Rolex. You've been wanting one. I know. I do really want one. If you guys have some inventory, let me know. But so, I mean, it, it varies. So that part, you know, it, it can vary very much. Um, so I, you know, if you're, if you're a client, I wouldn't, a lot of people have this like facade of real estate agents of like, oh, you sell this house, you make like this much money, but they don't really think about like splits fees, your ongoing costs, like cost of doing- well, Break it down. Let's say you get two and a half percent right now. You said 700K, you got, you got your friends into 700K. You yeah. got two and a half percent of that. Yeah, but it's, it's like, it's one of those things. It's like, you don't sell a 700K home every week. You don't. And especially, uh, yeah. But I'm just saying like in the, in the reality know, you, you, of things. But you build the pipeline. You, you, build, you, the you pipeline, build the pipeline. But especially like, even right now, like the, the reality is right. Like you guys have probably felt it like, it takes longer to sell a home. A lot longer. A lot longer. So days. now your holding cost just went up. A lot more. So your margin went down. A lot more. Right? It's true. So then yeah, if you look at it that way and then, but hey, have taxes gone down? <laughs> I heard they sent out like a new little stimulus just recently again. I did not get anything. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, so I don't know. They keep printing. News. They keep printing money, but it's like I'm not seeing it. You know. Yeah. Uh, I, I, but anyways, like so, cost of do, doing business everything and expenses went up. is everything still went up, up. It's and insane. all of us are still dealing with inflation. All of us are still paying more for gas, more for groceries, more for energy bills, more for everything. Right. But um, like, is your commission percentage really going up, or the amount that you're making really going up following that trend? Not really. You know, especially right now, pricing is <laughs> dropping down. So, so you're two and a half. So you're saying your two and a half percent is not the two and a half that it was twelve months ago. No way. But even even to begin with, it never Cause was because buying power. Well, most your typical let, let's just say it this way nicely, your typical employees W two people don't really nine two five. They don't get the concept because their taxes are pulled from their paycheck. Half the time they don't pay attention until they get the nice tax return the following spring. And then they call me, they're like, yo, I got down payment to buy a house. I'm like, perfect, let's go. So, <laughs> or they end up buying a Rolex. But um, us- Somebody get this us, guy a Rolex. <laughs> uh, us at the end of the year, we're like, shoot. You know, I'm trying to book an appointment with my tax accountant because I want to make sure that how much did I spend? How much did I make? Because I'm about to get hit with a fat bill. Yeah. Also, that's another great reminder. If you're a self-employed person 
and you don't know what you're gonna pay taxes right now, but then this year, Make an it's appointment. November. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. You can literally take advantage of Section 179. You can buy yourself a vehicle under your business. Prices going down on new cars as well, and take the depreciation. Definitely talk to your CPA. Yeah. Because you don't want to be slapped with a 20, 30k tax bill. Oh, it's terrible. And then you're like, I don't even have the money. Then you have to go and sell a couple more homes. Literally, that happened to me one time. I forgot. I just kind of like went through the room like. Oh shoot! I didn't buy anything. I didn't spend. It. I was like just saving cash. It, it happens. All Thought the I was time. good, and then I got slapped with a huge tax bill. And then when you see those commissions, you're like, man, I just had to sell a few homes just to pay my taxes. Wow, it's nuts. It is, yeah. So when you look at that, like especially if you're selling quite a bit, your gross looks pretty good. So you're now you're in a higher tax income, bracket. Tax bracket, and you got your ongoing expenses. I mean, real estate, like. If you really want to sell, if you want to be successful in selling, it's not just like you're sitting there, you do a few cute TikTok videos and your phone is ringing. That's not the business anymore. Like marketing costs money. Doing videos, doing this video costs money. How much is it costing you? Uh, people that work for you cost money. Uh, TCs, paperwork pushes cost money. Processors, everything costs money. So that, that check that you just saw, like honestly, you can just cut that in half. And then cut another half of taxes. Probably. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, for everyone, it's different, right? Everybody, like, I personally am the type, I'm a proponent where I'm always looking to run leaner if I can, yeah. trying to cut out extra expenses. But then always, you know, in business too, like, sometimes you're like, going, 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 going. And then you got yeah. these, <laughs> this new thing, this new thing, this new thing. And then you're like, shoot, I got to cut it back down again. You I like cut what, the fat. <laughs> I like what Serge says. Exactly. He says, cut the fat. And so that's exactly it. You do have but to do I that. But I can't. <laughs> <laughs> it's winter season gains. <laughs> <laughs> That's why the hoodie's in. Yeah. Uh, but I wanted to ask you, because there's a lot of controversy out there, even on TikTok. There's a lot of videos out there. There's no point to have a real estate agent at all. You're giving away 5% when you sell a house mm -hmm. for something that you can literally do yourself with escrow. Yeah. Why would somebody why would somebody go and hire a real estate agent? But check this out. I 100% agree, like fees, like especially on a million dollar home, when you're looking at that, like like that's pretty steep, right? Um, but what I will say is this, especially in a changing market like this, this is when the true players shine. There's been a ton of agents coming to the market the last two years. The market's been hot. You don't know how many meetings I've had with like young people. I want to be a real estate agent. What do I do? You know, like it seems so sexy to do. But until you get into the actual day-to-day -day grind and you actually want to do more than the average person to like actually build a business, it's a lot of work. And it's a lot of 9 p.m. someone's texting you, what do you think about this house? Or like, <laughs> or you doing a consultation. Half the time, I'm not even a real estate agent. I'm a counselor for people. Wow. Sometimes a pastor. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> different things of like... Are you a deacon? <laughs> Still trying to get ordained with the state of California. I think you pay like 60 bucks, but... <laughs> Are you serious? You just go pay online? That's I, it? I think so. Oh. I'm not doing that, but... Go back to like selling the property. First of all, right now, especially with a million dollar property, you're going to be sitting on the market. There's... With the, with the cool of the market right now, like that home is most likely not going to sell in the first two, three weeks like it was the last two, three years. The market's been anything but normal the last two or three years. It's been actually like white hot. And so... Like I would agree, like it would some homes if it was if it was ready to go priced right. I mean, it was going. Like there was there no was need not for an agent. not a not a not a crazy amount of effort. But I think that in this changing market, people are really gonna feel it, uh, especially with like you'll see this and this proves itself with like people like for sale by owners, because for sale by owners like they'll just put their house on the market. Sometimes they'll even run an open house by themselves. But then you'll see them sitting there for like six months and not selling that property. Why? Because they don't know how to market it. They're not in the market. And they might be saving that money, but realistically, they're losing. Yeah, but let's be realistic. Let's say marketing. You're talking about marketing. Mm -hmm. Knowing from a fact, like we market, right? Yeah. I'm not a real estate agent, but I, bu I bought hundreds of homes in mm -hmm. the past two years myself, yeah. physically. I'm not an agent. I don't have a license. Mm -hmm. I use... You basically should be an agent. <laughs> it's okay. I'll keep it for you guys. You're like Graham Stephan of Sacramento. <laughs> but the beautiful thing, what I, I love is that when you're talking about the for sale by owner, yeah. Before you, you like you literally hit it on the head. Like it's true. You put it in the market, you don't even have to do nothing. Yeah. Just get really, really good pictures. Pay the three hundred dollars, put mm -hmm. it in the market, and just 
expect offers. Mm -hmm. Now you do have to spend time. You have to sell that thing. You do have to sell, but you don't really run ads. Most agents never do. They don't go and, don't. and drop postcards to the neighbors say, hey, new house for sale. They don't do that. Yeah. The technically the only thing that real estate agent does is negotiations, mm -hmm. which if you're a better salesperson than an agent, you could do better. I mean, heck, some agents are so introverts that they're like scared to make a dial. Yeah. And I've personally seen them. I'm like, pick up the phone, make a dial. <laughs> pick you know, up the phone. Pick up the phone. Pick up the phone. Yeah. So it's kind of like, yeah. sometimes if you think about it for me, if like, I don't know, like some people do sell for more. 100%. And you, so that's what I'm saying is with this is like, that's why the mentality is like that. And I personally feel like it kind of ruined the industry image. Because you see a show on HGTV or you see Selling Sunset and it looks super like, wow, they just dress up and wear Louis Vuitton and like go show $10 million homes, you know? And it's, the reality is it's not that. Even if you sell luxury, it ain't that. And they don't it's even a, just sell in sense. They don't even know anything about their house. No. What kind of fridge is this? Oh, I don't know. You know, I met a few of those guys at some of the conferences. Like, bro, they're nothing special. Like, it's whatever. Really, what's going to come down to is the market's been so hot. So it brought in a huge inflow of all these agents that were kind of like doing a couple deals. So when, when, you, when I mentioned real estate agent to your typical consumer, they can name five people their mother-in-law, <laughs> their cousin, <laughs> their uh, you know brother, sister, and it's all like family. And like when you got five agents in the same family, you know it's bad. Yeah. Right. So it kind of ruined the perspective. I feel like, and so I get that. I get it. You know, um, like, and I bought properties off market too. Like I know, I know what it's like. Yo, you know. Actually, me and Sam bought a house about a year ago together. Yeah. A year ago, guys. We bought the house with the freaking car in there. <laughs> Check out that link it in the description. It was a 1942, <laughs> I remember, Chevrolet Special Deluxe. Not like Chick-fil-A, but it was <laughs> fire. I mean, we we bought that literally. I'm like, hey, I'll buy the, I'll buy the yeah. house, but it comes with the car. Mm -hmm. You know what? We got it because the seller needed that to move. Yeah. I think in this market right now, it would have been harder for me to sell that car because when I posted for sale, and I think I sold it for 30000 uh, when we sold, the, it took like two months to sell the car. Yeah. Because it's such a special, special item. item. And actually a guy, an older gentleman came in all the way from uh, Seattle, I believe, from Washington. Wow. Flew in here, picked up the car and drove back. Wow. Nice. So that was kind of like, That's wow. an awesome story. So, yeah. So I think that structuring deals is going to really shine. Like when you when you actually are thinking about Hey, do I hire an agent? Do I not hire an agent? Well, if you are going to hire an agent, for sure, you should talk to at least one, two, three. Agents. Or if you know one, like you better know, like they're solid, they're consistently doing it, they're in the market. Especially right now, um, I think that the cream is going to kind of rise to the top because in a changing market, 40% uh, sales volume just went down this year. So 40% no. drop in sales volume. Wow. If we even compare Sacramento region, when we look at sales volume for last month, October, 41% dip in sales volume when we're comparing to last October. And prices were back to 2021, what it was. Yep. So we're right around 2021 level. So now agents that want to really shine, first of all, they they want they need to know how to talk to a seller, a buyer to really inform them. This is the... This is the, well, first of all, this is the status of the market, not wow. just even leading them through the process. Like this is the current status of the market and letting them understand that. Most people don't know how to explain the current status of the market. They're like, interest rates are up. Things are good. I think we still see projections for 7% increase this year. Like, bro, that's out the window. So I think explaining the current status of the market is like huge. Even, but back to like what an agent does, I think personally, again, negotiations, marketing and i think that it's going to be definitely it's already harder to sell a property you know it's not just pro photos yeah, anymore it's really hard you right actually now. do have to put in the legwork like you got to go knock on doors put out postcards do the open houses run ads follow up with we this. do a lot of like youtube stuff so now we're like okay pro production video on every property you yeah. know or real for instagram on every property you know, and so you have to because if you don't, someone else is, and they'll just attention. Yeah. This is where the attention is, and that's where people go. Yeah. So I've literally had people contact me because of properties like through social media, through YouTube. No way. Yeah. Yeah. I actually sold a house for another agent, 1.5 million in Granite Bay. 
So I was co-listing this property. He was like, hey man, I need some help. It's kind of a one of a kind deal, blah, blah, blah. The market was still kind of like moving, but I mean, higher price point, they'll still take yeah, longer to move. Million. Those are special clients there. Yeah. Posted it on Instagram. Some back and forth DMs. Had a random guy call me and we ended up going over the phone. At that time, I was out of town. I structured for him to come and see the property with my buddy who was the other agent and got locked in and they ended up closing on that deal. Wow. Literally, power of social media right there. So guys, if you're an agent and you're not the on house social media- hit The house never hit the market. Dude, like- The house never hit the market. 1.5 mil? Yeah. Wow. The house never hit the market. Guys, it's very important to be out there, especially on social media, because you never know who watches this. And it's like, look, just right here, sold $1.5 million yeah. off market through Instagram. Yeah, so that's the power. And I think, you know, uh, if you're an agent watching this, I think that you should definitely be like, uh, realize the power of consistency. Because there's a lot of stuff I put out. I'm like, why am I doing this? You know, like sometimes it becomes a little mundane. You probably feel it too. You guys are always pushing content. Like sometimes, but it's just like fishing. You'll go, 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 boom. Yeah, it's consistency, good. You know, it hits. Providing as much value as possible for the end consumer. Yes, For 100%. anyone out there. That's why we're doing this show. That's why we're doing this because we want to be a one-step shop for everything. Investing, renting, even finding deals, wedge deals. Like it's just, I feel like it's important to bless the person who's watching in a way yeah. of providing Always. value a Always. true value because there's a lot of content out there why they should why should they watch you yeah you know what i mean that's the thing is with us like it's that's why i always try to bring best of the best mm -hmm. that's why you're here oh <laughs> that looking that camera is like, oh <laughs> <laughs> yeah well do you have anything else uh when it comes in for a new bill something you know for us to to watch out for or for something to pay attention when we structure in the deal? Because you're saying that you'll pay for the flooring, you'll pay for this, but what if somebody's like, you know what, I love this, maybe I'm approved for 900K, the house is about 700. Hey, put me a pool in there. Can they build a pool in? Or some divisions, just no pool whatsoever yeah. because we have those tiny backyards that you only have a room for a dog or a cat. Yeah, so the thing is with like new builds, especially the ones around here, like more track home styles, they kind of have their product and that's their product. So they don't really deal with pools. They'll refer you pool people or whatever. Or if you buy the model home and if it has a pool, then you know you could buy gotcha. that. But typically they leave, that's another like big cost with new builds that you want to consider is landscaping. Most people don't think about it, but it costs some serious bucks to but you landscape. you have to pay for landscaping yourself? Yeah. So they might just do the front, like a little patch of grass or some bark. So it looks fine. The front looks fine. You know, if you want to really revamp it, that's up to you. But the backyard, usually you just have a small concrete pad and it's up to you. The rest is just dirt. Wow. So it's like if you want to pay for sod installation, bark, whatever, like that's all money after close. And typically when you're buying a property, I mean, the reality for most people is biggest chunk of their change, if not all their cash is going towards down payment, closing costs. So they then, broke after that. Yeah. And then furniture, fridge, whatever else they want with that house. Does it right? come with the fridge? Not all of them. Wow. Yeah. You go cost Quran and <laughs> Port your orders in now because sometimes it takes a few weeks for delivery. So, wow. yeah. I mean, some do come with fridges, but most don't. Yeah. So th those are some costs you want to consider. You know, landscaping, most people don't think about that. Um, but what I recommend to people, like if you want to save money, you know you want to go the new build route specifically. Then I'll say sometimes it's better to go with basic upgrades do only on upgrades on stuff if you still have the opportunity to do so like if you're early on enough in the contract do the stuff that really matters to you maybe like kitchen cabinets you know that you really want like the white shaker style cabinets like you know the new modern ones yeah. do that but then when it comes to like faucets hardware stuff that you can do yourself or hire a handyman to do and buy them like cheaper on like Amazon even sometimes yeah. and get decent looking stuff um, or even floors. Sometimes they'll just leave the basic vinyl flooring or like carpet. They'll move in. They'll let the kids run it. They'll let the kids ruin the carpet. And then a year or two later, they'll hire someone who does pro floors and pick the exact floors that they want and probably even get it for a better price. But at that point, you're kind of dealing with yeah. the remodel of the house. But some people do that to kind of hey, I know I want to live in this community. I want to live in this area, but I don't want to spend this 50K in upgrades right now. Yeah, it sounds That's like, a good way yeah. to do it as well. Because if prices go down at the it's same about, time, it will go down too. It's all about, it yeah. Anything. It's all about entry-level pricing, I think. Like even like yeah. you were talking about, yeah, rates, 
honestly kind of suck right now, but pricing has gone down and I'd rather purchase a, pr a home at a lower price than a higher price home at a low interest rate. Let me ask you this. We're talking about uh, cheaper pricing. Let's say uh, you're saying that new build takes about six or nine months, right? Okay. So let's go back to, let's say June. Okay. June interest rates were cheaper, prices were higher. What if you are in a contract right now, somebody might watching, mm -hmm. might have a deal in Folsom, 780K. Mm -hmm. They haven't closed on it yet. Mm -hmm. It's like they're about to win in a month, mm -hmm. if not less. But then they can see that the model match and next door selling for 620. Mm -hmm. Can they go back and renegotiate because of the, because technically they don't have a loan yet. Mm -hmm. Even though they committed and stuff, but yeah. can they renegotiate like, yo, 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 like, come on. Yeah. Like, I, I understand, but I, I'm not in it. Mm -hmm. So that's actually, yeah, a really good point is that if you've been in contract and you see that now base price in the same home you're buying is lower than what you're paying for it, technically speaking, you're locked into a contract. That's the whole purpose of a contract. But yes, I've been, I've been seeing people say to the builder and, uh, hey, pricing is lower now, or you guys have better incentives with your uh, rate buy down or whatever it might be, right? Whatever incentives they're doing. So they'll say, hey, we'll cancel, we'll lose our deposit, you know, because the deposit, it could vary depending which builder you're with. It could be as low as 3K, it could be as high as 25K. So well, it could vary drastically. So that also depends. What do you see normally the deposit on like, average? Mm, like 10, 15. 10, 15K, yeah. Oh, nice and one. it could increase. So if you do uh, a lot of builders, especially if you're like doing all these upgrades, like a ton of upgrades, like for instance, if you're buying a luxury home, some of those guys are putting two to 400K in upgrades in their home, in the million dollar mark. Wow. Yeah. So if you're seeing that home listed for 1.2 in Eldorado Hills, brand new, the reality is out the door, you could be 1.4, 1.5. <laughs> That's without your pool. Wow. Yeah. So, and landscaping. So that sounds expensive. It I think is. I'm pretty confident from the experience that if you're buying a house for 1.4 million, you could literally go buy a lot, hire a project manager, and build a little custom home mm -hmm. the way you want it, the with the floors, with the upgrades, at your own pace, and have a say in the floor plan. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I, if you're talking about 1.5 million dollar property or the new subdivision, at that point, I'm just gonna go buy a brand new land and then build. Yeah, but see, everyone's not wired for that, you know. But and you then you don't have to. You hire a person, and yeah. they usually charge about ten to fifteen dollars per square foot. Yeah, that's how technically uh, a project manager is set when it comes into new builds because they they don't get paid right away. There's no mm. hourly salary. It's just like, hey, I'll build it for you. What do you want? Five thousand, six thousand, ten thousand square foot. Here's Let's the go. cost. Mm. But then, hey, I am 15%, yeah. $15 yeah. per square foot at that point. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, but like you're most first, like, you know, first time buyers or second time buyers, they're not really wired for that to make all those decisions, first of all. Because like that's also a lot of, even even going with one of these track builds, like you go into the design studio and let's say you're going through all these upgrades and stuff, your head could get lost in the sauce a little bit about like, <laughs> what looks good with what, you know, you can kind of go crazy in there. Imagine building a custom home from scratch. Like not everybody really knows even what they want. That's the why In-N-Out only has three choices and they're <laughs> killing it because simplicity wins sometimes. I mean, people truly, honestly, I think maybe like seven out of 10 just don't really know what they want. Yeah. I mean, oh. like, what do you want to eat for lunch? We deal with it every what day. What do you want to eat for lunch? Chick-fil-A. He's not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not one of them. <laughs> But, <laughs> but yeah, but, so I would say as far as like, if you're in contract, you see the pricing lower, yes, you should push to renegotiate. Am I promising that they will do that for you? I mean, but I'm saying that you definitely have leverage now as a buyer to get them to at least drop your price down. I mean, you're going to go through some different levels of management probably to make that happen or they might, you know, they, but really the builder still wants to sell and they might not drop it as much, but if you could get some sort of price drop or even some more incentives than 100%, that's what I'd be pushing for right now. I would rather lose deposit because if I know I put in 10K uh, deposit and the prices drop 75K, I don't care about no, 10K. No, 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 I'm saying that if you can get them to drop it to that 75 and a match, then yeah, like run with the deal. If the interest rate's still good, you got it locked in, yeah. you know, you're moving forward. Um, that's different, but yeah. Is there anything else that people should be looking out when they're, structuring a deal when it comes in i would just really look at your options out there i mean you know when it comes to really how people buy is based on area that's the reality like if someone knows that they want to live in el grove 
the reality of them, even if there's a crazy good deal in Roseville that I can offer them, the reality is they don't want to go to Roseville. They want Elk Grove. So it, what I always tell people is first highlight the area that you want to be in. Focus on that area. When the deal presents itself, go for that deal. But don't be this shotgun approach. You know, they always say like, uh, don't chase two rabbits. You'll never catch one. So when you can focus on an area, you could be focused like this is the general area or even this is my top two areas. I know that I want to be in this. This is a style of home I'm looking for. This is the size I need, blah, blah, blah. You could look for these builders. And then base, each one, the incentives change right now from month to month. The market's changing so much that the incentives are changing from month to month. Oh. I get different newsletters and also homes that are becoming available, you know, different ones. So it all depends on the specific home. But yeah, more builder, certain builders are definitely more flexible. Like right now, I've seen some barely do any price adjustments and they're only giving like 10 or 15K in lender incentives. And I'm like, and I know because I hear the back end conversations, they're not, their reps are suffering because they're not selling. Like there's their reps are having a hard time selling the product because oh, wow. they have a high price product and they're not giving the incentives when the guy down the street's like slashing the price, like let's move inventory. Wow. Like there's one even builder right now. Um, I don't know if I should say it, but anyways, big builder. If you buy one of their homes, brand new, if you buy one of the quicker move-ins, they're still offering a rate at 4.99%. No way. Yep. Right now, 4.99 if you buy their home. If you buy a quicker move-in home, so that means the home is going to be ready between one and three months to close by the end of the year. Typically. What about price? I mean, are they going to be based on today's market price or the 4.99 so, so, base of June? No, they've already adjusted some pricing. That's fire. Yeah, yeah. So, But the other thing you can do is you can negotiate with, let's say you're like, I don't care about that 4.99%. I'm paying cash or, hey, I'll, I'll eat the high high rate, but I prefer a lower price. They'll work with you. They're like, okay, you want a lower price? We can negotiate more on the price, but you're keeping your rate, whatever you're getting, or we can really buy down your rate, and so you have a better rate, better monthly payment. Gotcha. So, so you, instead of buying down to 4.99, yeah. they're putting that money towards the... Yeah, sense. so I mean, that's like, that's stellar. Like if somebody's really complaining about rates right now, I'm like, hey, hey I got a five fifty, six dollars $600,000 house for you right now, 4.99%, can you beat that? Probably not. But they're not pushing they're pushing volume. So they want they want to push, you know, Again, it comes down to business uh, model. Like, do you want to push volume or do you want to push smaller but like bigger margins? Well, there you have it, guys. Thank you so much. If you're still watching, I'm going to link all the information in the comments below in the description with how you can get in front of this guy right here. He's super busy. You might have to call two times. No. All you have to do is leave a voicemail. I'm buying a house. He'll pick you. <laughs> He'll call you back yeah. real quick. <laughs> but I'll link all of the information below. Sam, thank you so much for of being course, here. Man. Uh, it was honestly a privilege having you and you'd be able to share your knowledge with the audience. I'm honestly grateful for that. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. It's been Absolutely. awesome. Absolutely. Boom. Boom. Let's do it.